around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. People today go more, take their pleasures with them. This is the lively life, the life for Pepsi-Cola. Light, bracing, clean-tasting Pepsi. So think young. Say, Pepsi, please. Take Pepsi wherever you go. So go ahead and pick the drink. And let you drink, young as you think. Yes, get the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi for those who think young. Well, now, Marshal, you've come ask what I want for supper? Huh? Or did you just come to see am I comfortable in your jailhouse? Come on out. Where are you taking me? I'm letting you go. Come on out. You letting me go? After all them things you said I'd done? Well, Marshal, that's one on you. Come on. Get out of there. <laughs> oh, sure, Marshal. I'll go, all right. <laughs> I told you all along you weren't going to hold me. You remember I said that? Hmm? You remember, Marshal? I remember. Well, maybe next time you ain't going to be so quick to haul a man. You listen to me, Bernie. I'll haul you in every chance I get, and the quicker it is, the better I'm going to like it. <laughs> you just have to let me go. Don't count on it. If I catch you hanging around Dodge, I'll arrest you for disturbing the peace, and that's a charge I can make stick by myself. Well, you can't do you that. You just try me. Now go on, get out of Dodge while you still can. Marshal? I have a beer, Sam. Okay, Marshal. There you go. Thanks. Oh, hello, Matt. I didn't see you come in. Yeah, you look mighty interested in that poker game over there. Oh, yeah. I always get nervous when the stakes get that big. Everybody paid off, though. No trouble. This time, anyway. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. You want to sit down? You haven't been in here for a oh, No, thanks, Kitty. I haven't got time right now. Well, I guess I'll have to be grateful for small favors. Huh? How's that? That I catch a glimpse of you at all. Oh, no, Kitty. Here comes Doc. Oh, yeah. I'll be here, Doc. I see you. I see you. You don't suppose I could miss the sight of your big frame cozy enough for that bar? Hello, Kitty. Hello, Doc. Have a drink? Ah, uh, yes, I don't mind for A beer for the Doc, Sam. Sure, Miss Kitty. Oh, there's nothing like beer to wash the purry dust down a man's throat. Are you just off the road, Doc? Nine miles out, nine miles back. There's a new baby at the Lurie place. Here you are, Doc. Oh, thank you. How's Molly, Doc? Oh, she came through fine. She doesn't really need me at all. She knows more about it than I do, but <laughs> How many does this make it? Seven. And I oh. suppose I'll be going out there again this time next year. You ought to give them a bargain rate. No, no, not for that trip. <laughs> Oh, see, yeah. on the way I passed Art Bernie, riding hard for his old man's place. Yeah. I thought you had him locked up. Well, I did, Doc. I still ought to have him locked up. What happened? I got a wire from Abilene saying to release him. They've arrested another man for the murder. They're bringing him here. Well, then Art has the right to go free, doesn't he? That's what they tell me. You still think he's guilty, man? Well, I'll say this. I sure don't think he's innocent. Oh, you had to let him go? Yeah. For now, I had to let him go. Oh, 
Pa? Pa? Me, Pa? Richard Bellerin, come in the house. <laughs> sure, Pa. I told that big marshal he weren't never going to hold me. He let you free, did he? He sure did, Pa. He sure did. I know what he would. Ain't no jailhouse going to hold Ark Bernie, Pa. You know that. You feel proud. Well, sure, Pa. They could make you prideful, too. Me riding away laughing at that marshal. You know why they let you go? <laughs> they just couldn't hold me at all, Pa. I'm too smart for them. They let you go because they arrested your brother, Junius. They what? They took in Junius over to Abilene. For that same shooting? For that same shooting. Well, ain't no sense in that. Old June wasn't no near in ten miles to the hold up that night. I figured you'd know that for sure. Well, I... Yeah, I know it, Pa. But they, they can't hold old June. Who told you they went and locked him up? Maybe there's some mistake. There's no mistake. Old Brackett come by. He was in the telegraph office in Dodge when the wire come in. They got Junius. So they let you go free. Well, that ain't right, Pa. It, it, it just ain't right. Old June didn't have nothing to do with it. He can't even shoot straight. Then you better fix things, Ark. Oh, sure, Pa. I'll fix things. You better fix things so nothing happens to your brother, Junius. Well, ain't nothing going to happen, old June, Pa. I'll see to that for certain. It ain't fit that a man pays for what he never done. That's the truth, Pa. And it ain't fit neither that a man lets another man do the paying. Well, I, I'll get him, Pa. I'll get him. You know I always took care of old June. You bring him home. Well, sure, Pa. I'll bring him home. <laughs> You can explain away the unique qualities of the CBS Radio Network's in-person program with the word entertainment. True, there are highly entertaining facets to the program. But calling in-person entertainment is like describing the Empire State Building as an office building. Fact is, Monday through Friday evenings, CBS Radio airs on in-person intimate word portraits sketched by artists with highest authority on the subjects they discuss. These artists have ranged from chorus girls to former delinquents, outraged citizens to winners of windfalls, people brushed by comedy or tragedy. In Person brings you real stories that have overtaken real people in all walks of life, told by the people involved. It's more than entertainment, more than news. It's In Person, a program far easier to hear and enjoy than describe. Each weekday evening, In Person offers novelty and high human interest, sometimes tears. Listen for it here. A breakfast sure tastes better when you don't cook it, Mr. Dillon. I like them better cooked myself. Oh, well, now, of course they ought to be cooked. But I claim it's better when somebody else cooks it but me. Yeah. Uh, see, Mr. Jones, what I mean is I, 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 I don't think that anybody... All can... right. All right, Chester. Never mind. <laughs> you might as well go down and pick up the mail, huh? Yes, sir. I'll do it. I'll be in my office. All right, sir. I'll bring it right there. Marshal? What? Who's there? Me, Marshal. Art Bernie. I told you to stay out of Dodge, didn't I? Well, I come to see about my brother, Junior. Now, what about him? You know what about him right now. He's been took in for that shooting. You got him in that jailhouse. Not yet, I haven't. He's doing a couple of days. Well, now, you listen to here, Marshal. There ain't no sense to hold an old June. There ain't no sense at all. How do you figure that? Well, well, you're holding him for that killing, ain't you? That's right. Well, old June never killed nobody in his life. He wouldn't even know how. The sheriff in Abilene thinks he did. Well, I know different. Old June, he... He went within ten miles of that hold-up that night. You're pretty sure of that, are you? I know that for a fact. Yeah, you tell it to the judge. Huh? How's that? Your brother will be standing trial in Hayes City next week. All you have to do is tell the court what you know. <laughs> Uh, no, I ain't fool enough to walk in in no court. Well, it's up to you. You, you. you listen, Marshal. It it just ain't right. You you 
just, you just can't hold old June. We'll hold him, all right. Unless we got somebody else where they kill him. You remember that. And if you have anything more to say, I'll be in my office. Well, I'll be back, Marshal. I'll be back. There's this telegraph just come in. Oh, thanks. Uh, will I go get the horses? What? Well, Mr. Dillon, if we're going to take the prisoner off the stage at that relay station, we've got to hurry. You should take more time reading my telegrams, Chester. Well, well I just happened to see it, Mr. Well, Dillon. you didn't see it right. It's tomorrow we meet the stage. We'll leave in the morning. <laughs> Must be in a hurry to get this fellow, Mr. Dillon. Having us take him off the stage way out here. That's because of the judge. He has to get the learned. They're pushing the trial up. It's all right with me. Well, most prisoners ain't in such a hurry as you. Well, if you ain't done nothing, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Ain't that so, Marshal? Yeah, if you can prove it to the judge. He'll believe me, Marshal. A man like a judge with all his learning is bound to believe me. I ain't never been one to lie much. The judge has to believe the evidence. They tracked your horse, Junius. Well, that don't say I was riding him. Well, you better find out who was riding him, then. Well, I won't have to find him. He'll come if I need him. He'll come. You'll need him. Mr. Dillon, look yonder. From the dust it's raising, somebody sure is riding the dust in a hurry. Yeah. Let's wait and see who it is. taking him yet? Hello, Ark. You said he'd be in dodge for a spell. They moved the trial up. Well, he ain't going to stand no trial. I told you, Marshal. I told him, Junius, how he could fix it. Ain't nobody going to go to no court. You let my brother Junius go, Marshal. Let him go right now. Marshal, I'm warning you. And I'm warning you, Ark. Don't you draw on me ever unless you mean it. Well, I mean it about free in June. All right, Ark, draw Go ahead. Draw. That's all right, Art. No need for shooting. You come along to the trial. You can tell the judge. I'll wait, Art. I can wait. Don't worry, June. Don't you worry about a thing. I guess Art wants to tell Pa about it first. Yeah. I guess he does. The present estimated teacher shortage across the nation is 135,000. That's how many teachers' jobs await right now, with every reason to believe the number is on the rise. This poses an important question for high school students and college undergraduates. Tomorrow's citizens will be forced to cope with this problem if it is not solved in the near future. Tomorrow's citizens can best contribute to the solution by embracing teaching careers. It's as simple as that. More teachers graduating from our colleges are literally the only way this critical shortage can be eliminated. During the month of April, observed for the fourth year as Teaching Career Month, Educators join in urging more students to look into teaching. Added to the personal rewards in teaching, there is an important intangible, the importance of being needed. Consider seriously your increasing value to your community as you become a teacher, school administrator, or professor, serving your nation's needs as you grow in ability and stature. <laughs> Well, that sure didn't take long, did it, Mr. Dillon? No, uh, Chester didn't. Ain't much time at all for a man to have his life ruled away from him. Yeah. 
just don't seem right. Even with all that about the horse and the money bag being found near him and all such as that, I kept thinking somebody would come up with the real story. Yeah, Junius thought so, too. Well, Mr. Dillon, if he knows who done it, why don't he speak up? I don't know, Chester. Maybe he doesn't know for sure. Maybe he won't speak up against his brother. I don't know. You think Art did it all right, don't you? Yeah. But I can't prove anything any more than Junius. Marshal? Come on out, Art. Is it over? Yeah, it's over. He was found guilty. They can't do nothing like that to old June, Marshal. They've done it, Ark, and they're going to hang him. Unless he talks. Or you do. June won't never talk. You sure? Oh, sure, I'm sure. My brother ain't. Yeah. I wonder about something. What? Are you his brother? Come on, Chester, let's get away from him. <laughs> trying to prove he could be as brave as that bombastic brother of his. He'd probably been waiting for this chance all his life. Well, he got it. And, of course, if you're right about things, his, his brother's really a coward. Yeah, Doc, if I'm right, he's a coward. I left him. He's dead. Couldn't rightly help it. You could help it. No, oh, Paul, I tried. Road to Dodge, a road to Hayes City. I talked myself blue with that marshal. But you never talk straight. Paul, well, I, I told him Junior's never done it. Did you tell him how you know it for sure he never done it? Paul, oh, did you speak up in court where it caught it? Listen, Paul, no way I, I, I could have done that un, unless... Unless what? You know. You know, Paul. You tell me, Ark. Unless they'd have hung me instead. I figured. I had to hear it from you, but I figured. Now, you hear me, Ark? You hear me good? We Bernies ain't never been much, but we stood for our home. No, listen, Paul. I ain't your pa, not no more. Ain't no son of mine who won't stand up for his brother. I, I try. I I just couldn't do it. You Paul. keep the horse. You get right on him, you ride on out. Don't you never come back. Pa. Go on now. Don't you never come to my door again. But it, it, it's the home place, Paul. I'm your son. I ain't got no son. <laughs> Would you mind doing it outside? Well, yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. I just thought it might kindly cheer you up, son. Mm-hmm. 
My land, you've been cross as a bear lately. Even Miss Kitty says so. I figured this might help. Well, it doesn't, Chester. Yes, sir. Marshal? Oh, I'm tired of seeing you, Art Bernie. I told you I'd lock you up if you hung around Dodge. You won't have to, Marshal. No? Well, you just watch now, me. Now, wait a minute. Wait. Marshal, I've been wrong a lot, ain't I? Enough. I was wrong about my brother, wasn't I? They hung him. Yeah. But you know he never done that, Marshal. Uh, you were the only one who could prove it. Yeah, I was. I'm the one should have paid for it, too. Is this a confession? You don't need no confession. You remember when I wouldn't draw on you that time on the road, Marshal? I remember. When you faced me right down, I turned tail and I run? That's right, I remember. I ain't never running no more, Marshal. I'm paying up. I'm drawing on you now. Marshal. His gun! Marshal... Tell my pa that I, I tried to square it. You tell him He's dead. Yeah. Hand me his gun, Chester. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Dunn, I could have swore he had you out, Brew. Yeah, Chester, he did. The gun's empty. Well, it, it ain't like Art to make a mistake like that. He didn't make a mistake, Chester. He was trying to make up for one. He was paying up. The only way he knew how. Everybody likes good news. Since this is true, wouldn't expanded CBS News broadcasts find greater favor with the vast CBS radio listening audience if they simply omitted bad news? There's a pretty obvious answer to that one, and it goes like this. Of course not. Expanded CBS News has only one object, to present all the important global news swiftly and without bias. This takes more than just good intentions. It takes thousands upon thousands of miles of complex communications links, hundreds of skilled newsmen. There's that matter of experience, too, the kind of experience only years can create. For longer, stronger coverage of world happenings, it's expanded CBS News on CBS Radio. You can depend on it. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Ken Lynch, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh, inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.